Hello and welcome to another episode of Second Hand Stories. This is a place where I tell you stories. What kind? Well, histories, mysteries and unbelievable stories. And here is this week's story. This is a remarkable story. It is a story about several admirable things. It's a story about how much difference a single individual can make. It's the story of a man who experiences soul-crushing grief and yet finds the strength to try to stop that grief from touching other lives. This is the story of Karimul Haq or as he is better known Bike Ambulance Dada. And here is how it goes. Karimul Haq was born on 7th June 1965. He was born to Nalwa Mohammed and Jafrunesa and he was born in West Bengal's Jalpaiguri district. His father was a night watchman who worked for a local zamindar and he grew up in poverty. He was one of four kids and they lived in a thatched hut that could barely keep out the cold or the rain. When Karimul Haq looked back at this part of his life, he always remembered the sacrifices and the selflessness of his mother that made it possible for them to have just about enough. His mother was a person who gave up everything for the family. When it became too cold, it was his mother who would give up her extra layers of clothing so that the children could be warm. When they didn't have enough food, it was his mother who would give up food so that the kids could be fed. He remembers how his mother would spend a lot of time in the monsoon getting the wet kindling going to light this fire on these wet sticks of wood. And when he thought back to this time, he thought back to how much she had cared and how grateful he was that she had done so. He adored his mother, loved her and he couldn't thank her enough. However, as Karimul grew up, his youth was one that lacked direction. He was slightly wavered and all of this changed when he eventually got married. He married a woman called Anjuvara and soon after marriage, he settles down. He begins working as a daily wage worker and takes up odd jobs but more or less he finds a little bit of direction in life. The period of happiness that followed his wedding proved to be short-lived because soon tragedy began stalking the family and it began with the death of his daughter. Now Anjuvara and Karimul would go on to have five children but they would lose their first child early. The first child was a girl they had sadly named Lucky. She would not make it past infancy. And when she passed away, a cloud of gloom and sadness descended upon the family. Little had they begun piecing their lives back together when tragedy struck again. In 1989, Karimul Haq's mother, Jafrunesa, suffered a stroke that left her paraplegic. Karimul and his elder brother do their best to take care of their ailing mother. But no matter what they did, her condition kept getting worse every single year. And it reached its lowest point in the year 1995. It was the December of 1995, a cold, wintry December, when suddenly on this one particular day, Jafrunesa's health began worsening rapidly. The day began with her feeling uncomfortable and restless. And then as night approached, she became unconscious. As his mother lost consciousness, Karimul was distraught. He couldn't believe what was happening in front of his eyes. She was gasping for breath. His mother needed help urgently. 
Now, Karimul's family did not own a phone, and so there was no way for him to call for an ambulance at home. He quickly rushes out into the cold night looking for help. He's looking for a doctor who he can bring to the house or a car that he can use to take his mother to the hospital. But on this cold, freezing and desolate night, he can find neither. Now you can imagine what must have gone through him. He's running around, rushing from place to place, looking for help. His breath is catching in his chest. He's panicking. His world is falling apart around him. Finally, he can take it no longer and he sits down on the footpath and starts weeping. He breaks down. You can imagine how terrible this moment must be for him. Soon, his despair turns to abject resignation. He thinks back to his mother. He remembers her gasping for air and he makes a decision. He decides to head back home and spend time with his mother in her final moments. He reaches the house and he finds that his mother is still unconscious. He stands next to her. He holds her hand in his and he apologizes to his mother for his inability to find help. He apologizes to her that he couldn't do any more. And then as he's with her, he sees his mother breathe her last. Now his mother's death would have a profound effect on him. It destroys him. It crushes his very soul. Karimul Haq would not emerge from the sadness for several months. For several months, he stopped eating properly, stopped sleeping properly, stopped talking to people. His days and nights were haunted by this moment. When he went to sleep, he would have nightmares of his mother's last moments. And when he woke up, he would constantly relive the horrors of that night. Now, it's in this extremely fragile and extremely tragic state that an idea starts forming in his mind. This idea is born out of anger and grief. And here is what he was thinking about. He thinks about what could he possibly do to help anybody else who finds themselves in this situation. He wonders if there's something he could do that would help another person not lose a loved one because they couldn't get them medical attention in time. He wonders if there is something or some way that he could help. This catastrophic event and the ensuing grief had transformed him. And though he had formed this notion of wanting to help people in a medical emergency, it would still take years for him to figure out exactly how he would go about doing this. In fact, that is the way destiny takes shape. It meanders painstakingly from event to event until finally gathering momentum and clarity and then revealing itself to be an inevitability. Eventually, time passes and Karimul does not have the luxury of being away from work for too long. His family needs him to begin working again. The circumstances of his life necessitate that he move on. Slowly, he resumes work and starts picking up odd jobs again, becomes a daily wage worker and eventually finds work in another tea plantation. It is at this tea plantation that he would meet the next part of his destiny and it would come four years later. Four years after his mother passed away, Karimul Haq is working at this tea plantation. And as he's working in this tea garden, there is a colleague, a co-worker who's working next to him, a man called Ajul Haq. Now, as they're working on this one particular day in 1999, suddenly Ajul collapses. Ajul collapses on the floor and all the workers stop. Everything comes to a stop and they immediately try to call for an ambulance to get help for Ajul. Now they call for the ambulance but for one reason or another, it's taking too long. It's not able to get to this team plantation on time. As Karimul watches what's happening, as he sees 
Edgel's delicate condition, suddenly he is thrown back to that wintry night in 1995 as he saw his mother helplessly gasp for breath, helplessly wait for medical attention. He knows that this is exactly that kind of situation and now he has an opportunity to right those wrongs. Suddenly he is gripped by this idea that come what may, he is going to get Edgel the help he needs. Looking around and thinking fast, Karimul spots his manager's motorcycle and suddenly an idea strikes him. It comes to him fully formed. He tells the other workers to get Edgel up, put him on the bike and strap him to Karimul. They strap Edgel on the bike to him with a cloth. Now with Edgel strapped to his back, Karimul takes the keys, starts the motorcycle and speeds away from the tea plantation. He takes Edgel to a health centre. Now at the health centre, the doctors look at Edgel's condition and they say that they are not equipped to help. They request Karimul to take him to the district hospital. So Karimul turns the bike around and now speeds away to the district hospital. He gets there swiftly and as he's getting there, he's hoping and praying that Edgel is able to to hold on, that he doesn't lose him en route, that he doesn't lose him to this delay. Now they get to the district hospital and that is where the doctors are able to revive Edgel. Now as this happens, the doctors also tell Karimul, they thank him for bringing Edgel to the hospital in time and they tell him that if it wasn't for his timely intervention, Edgel would have lost his life. Now, when this incident happens, suddenly everything clicks into place for Karimul Haq. Suddenly, he realizes that he doesn't need to get an ambulance to help people. Maybe a motorcycle will do. Suddenly, this idea takes root in his mind that he just needs to get a motorcycle and that way he'll be able to help ferry people to the hospital in case they need it. This is an idea that becomes an obsession for Karimul Haq. But reality being what it is, it would still take a long time before he would realize this dream. And the reason for this was because Karimul Haq was poor, his family was large and this motorcycle was a huge investment. It would take several years before he would finally get this motorcycle. But in the meantime, did he just sit waiting around? No, he did not. He did what he could within his means. What he does is that he gets a bicycle. If he couldn't get a motorcycle, that doesn't matter. He gets a bicycle and he uses that to ferry people to the hospital. Word starts spreading that there is a man who is taking people on his bicycle to the hospital. His number is passed around and people call him and he doesn't refuse them. As time passes, people begin realizing that Karimul Haq is serious about this idea of helping people in need. He's well-intentioned, but more than that, he is absolutely dedicated. And so, after a while, after several years, after he's gotten his daughters married, finally, he realizes his dream. Soon, he gets a little bit of money from the people in his life who are convinced that he's doing the right thing. And the rest of the money, he gets via a loan. And then finally in 2007, eight years after he had this idea of getting the motorcycle, he finally puts his hands on his own motorcycle. And it is in 2007 that Karimul Haq transforms into bike ambulance Dada. With his motorcycle, he is able to get people to these hospitals much faster and more efficiently and he dedicates himself to the cause with even more enthusiasm. What he would do is that he would usually take patients to the Malbazar Subdivisional Hospital. This was a 15 minute ride. But if the patient was more critical, he would then take them to the Jalpaiguri Sadar Hospital. This was a whole hour away. And to get to this hospital, you had to pass through a forest and over a river. 
and karimul haq had no qualms doing both these things whether it was day or night it did not matter to him all that mattered was getting this person the medical attention they needed as quickly as he possibly could his family though they were taken aback by his fervor they understood it and they supported it though he would get calls in the middle of the night they did not stop him he would sometimes take a little bit of an off from his work to go and help people but even the folks at work understood his cause and so word starts spreading even more and even more people find out about pike ambulance dada however as with anything unusual or unorthodox the first reaction to it is usually ridicule and karimul haq faced his fair share of it too because people did not understand where he was coming from for them it just seemed like he was making a clumsy effort to replace an ambulance this however was not the case he wasn't trying to replace ambulances he was merely trying to fill the gaps where ambulances couldn't get to every single time he helped somebody out he would always imagine that he was doing the service that he wished he had done for his mother it was a force that was beyond him that kept him going that made him push past all the criticism all the ridicule and keep doing what he was doing keep helping as many people as he possibly could there would be an incident in the year 2008 that would finally put all of these doubts and all of this ridicule out of his mind once and for all because here is what happened in 2008 in 2008 karimul haq on this one particular day found himself at a tea stall He was at this tea stall with a few acquaintances. They were sharing chai and conversations, and it's just then that one of the men, a man called Babu Mohanta, suddenly lets out a shriek. The other men are surprised and they ask Babu Mohanta what's happened. Babu Mohanta tells them that he feels like he's been bitten by a snake. They immediately inspect his foot, and indeed, right above the ankle, they find a snake bite. now at this moment all the men begin looking for the snake because in these cases it's imperative that you identify the snake that's bitten you so that you can get the right treatment it's karimul who happens to spot the snake but try as he might he can't seem to identify it so thinking quickly and acting bravely he takes a box catches the snake puts the snake in the box and puts a lid on this box Now with the snake secure he tells Babu Mohanta to get on the bike he secures Babu Mohanta to himself with a cloth and he gets a third person to get on the bike too now he tells the third person to make sure that Babu Mohanta is awake while he rushes them to the hospital Karimul Haq takes off from this tea stall and drives extremely quickly as fast as he can to get Babu Mohanta to the hospital but to get to the hospital they have to pass over this bridge and as they approach the bridge karimul haq's heart sinks because he sees that this bridge is choked with traffic cars are standing still there's a gridlock that's formed and to make matters even worse amongst the traffic there is an ambulance Now the ambulance with its large body is stuck in this jam but Karimul with his much more nimble bike ambulance is able to wriggle his way through this traffic is able to get out on the other side and eventually rush to the hospital now at the hospital they get babu mohanta to a doctor and they tell the doctor that babu mohanta has been bitten by a snake the doctor immediately asks them do you know which one it was and at this point Karimul Haq brings out the box and presents the snake to the doctor the doctor sees this and jumps back he's startled surprised taken aback he doesn't know what to make of this but eventually he calms down looks at the snake in the box identifies it and then treats babu mohanta babu mohanta's life would be saved 
and he would be the first person in the entire village to survive such a snake bite now as this incident reaches its happy conclusion karimul haq makes his way back now he reaches the bridge and he finds that even now the traffic has hardly cleared the ambulance that he had passed by is still stuck right where it was now he approaches the ambulance and he asks the attendants inside whether he can help out but to his dismay he finds out that the patient has already passed away now it was in that moment that a realization dawns on karimul haq he had always felt like his bike ambulance was a poor substitute a clumsy effort as people said but in this moment he realized that maybe in certain situations in certain circumstances maybe his humble bike ambulance might be better served it might even be better in some situations than its regular counterpart and when he has this realization suddenly things become even more clear for karimul haq suddenly he is filled with even more confidence and even more vigor to do his job to fulfill his purpose and he returns to his work with even more vigor slowly but surely the legend of bike ambulance dada grew bigger and bigger and bigger word started spreading further and further that here was a man who was willing to help out no matter what the situation it didn't matter when you called him day or night he would do his best to help you out and in return he asked for nothing all he wanted was to get the patient to a hospital as fast as he possibly could and he didn't just do this for a few days for a few months he did this year after year after year over all these years he had personally helped over 4000 people now all these cases did not have happy endings there were several times when the person would pass away strapped to his back on his bike ambulance while he was still on the way to the hospital and yet it did not deter him it only made his resolve stronger he was driven by an inner purpose every single time he helped people out he felt like he was honoring the memory of his mother and he was doing the one thing that he couldn't do for her which is get medical attention to these people as time went on his small idea of the humble bike ambulance began catching on several villages and some ngos adopted the bike ambulance and the fast quick bike ambulance seemed to do very well in these far flung places that couldn't be serviced by a regular ambulance and in that way several thousand more lives were saved by this idea that karimul haq had had and the passion and the determination with which he had seen it through and then an even more amazing thing began happening the more he helped people the more help he seemed to get in return soon people donated to him the bajaj corporation gave him bike which was specially designed to be a better bike ambulance eventually his single bike ambulance grew to two more bike ambulances which are now driven by his two sons what's more his story did not go unnoticed it wasn't contained to his community because on 30th march 2017 karimul haq found himself at the rashtrapati bhavan getting the padma shri award and as he received this award from the president of the country karimul haq reflected on his life he felt proud that a person with such a small income and limited capacity was able to get this far but more than anything else he thought back to the moment that had changed his life 
the helplessness that he had felt on the night that his mother passed away and as he received this award he hoped that maybe there would be a future where no one would have to experience that pain and that is the story of karimul haq and the extraordinary things that even a single individual is capable of So that's it from this episode I hope you enjoyed it if you did then please leave a like and a comment if there are other stories that you'd like me to cover then also leave them in the comment section below this particular story was researched from the book bike ambulance dada which is written by biswajit jha it's a very moving account of karimul haq's life and this small story could do no justice to the amount of detail that is there in this book So if you enjoyed the story do pick this book up. And if you're looking for your next read you can also head over to Penguin's YouTube channel. They do a lot of 1 minute summaries of a lot of their books which might help you figure out what you would like to read next. That is it from this episode. Until next time, take care and bye-bye.